Hey guys, Daniel here, and today I'm going to review the Vivo X from Blue. And I'm going to go over the design first and going over the exterior. We do have three buttons, a volume up and down, and a power button. And a power button is a little bit, has a little bit um, different texture to it. It's a bit grazed. It feels uh, really nice and distinct other than the volume rockers, which is really smooth. Moving to the back, you do get a fingerprint reader and two cameras along with the flash. On the bottom, you do get a headphone jack, a micro USB port, and a speaker grill. The screen size is 6 inches and the resolution is 720 by 1440 which on paper doesn't sound too good but it's decently sharp. From playing games, watching videos, or even reading text, you don't really see much pixelation from the 720 resolution screen. So for the performance, it's pretty smooth. For the most part, it's at 2.6 GHz with the octa-core. There are times when you start a game, it might jitter a little bit or even watch uh, some videos. But once it got things to load and everything, it should be smooth after that. The phone has 4 gigs of RAM and has 64 gigs internal storage. You can also expand it for another 64 gigs as well. For battery life, this thing packs 4,010 mAh battery. And they said that it, it will last me through two days easily, which it, it can. But if I'm like playing games or playing a lot of um, YouTube videos and just constantly being on it, it would probably last me for a day or maybe a day and a half. This phone has a fingerprint reader and it works really well. It also has face detection, which is something I didn't expect for a low-end budget phone, but it works. It's not the fastest. To use the face detection, you have to pick up your phone, turn on the phone with the power button, and then you can get in from there. But it's not as fast as a fingerprint reader, and also by the time you pick up your phone, the finger would have been on the fingerprint reader anyway, so you would have easily accessed your phone before using the facial detection. So. With that in mind, it's pretty useful, useless in that area, but it is useful when it's say on a table where you don't, you can't access a fingerprint reader easily, but there are some limitations. Of course, it doesn't work when it's completely dark and it doesn't work when it's sideways. So you have to make sure the phone is pretty much horizontal to your face for it to work. The phone has four cameras, two in the front and two in the back. And on the front, there's a 20 megapixel and an 8 megapixel camera. This thing can do a wide angle selfie, so it's 120 degrees. It can capture a lot of your friends, half your body, and a lot of your background. So that's that's pretty much my favorite feature with the front facing camera. You do have a bokeh mode, which is a bar at the bottom and you can adjust it. This also applies for front and back of the camera. Going to the back, there's a 13 and a 5 megapixel camera at f2.0. The image quality at daytime is decent at best. It's not as good as, let's say, a Pixel 2 or S9, but for a budget phone, it does really good. And it also packs a lot of features for your camera. With uh, video, you don't get too much options. It's just 1080p at most. Low light pictures doesn't do that good. Of course, you see a lot of noise. And there is a night option. It works a little bit better, and there is a difference. The Vivo X costs $250. For that price and with all the features you do get with the design and everything, I think it's worth it. Overall, I think it's a good phone. You do get a big screen. The quality of your screen in hand is comfortable to hold. It has an octa-core processor, so overall it's pretty smooth for its performance, especially when you're doing everyday tasks like just browsing and um, watching videos. It should just do fine. Having a small hand is really hard to get on top of the screen, drag it down and adjust the brightness to get through the settings, so it's at the bottom which I do like because I can easily access with one hand and not two. The biggest downside for me is the micro USB cable. A lot of phones right now are coming out with USB-C, so that should be the future and that should be where we're heading towards, but I feel like having a micro USB on this phone is a big step back. So that's it for me guys. All the links will be down below. Remember to like, subscribe, favorite this video, and always enjoy your entertainment. He is living a life And you can never decide But this time you should just keep your clothes on Tell him to move on It's gonna for too long